And here we are at long last, my friends. Welcome to the final adventure of Ohm and our colony. 40 episodes of progression from tribal to, to nothing. No technologies at all with a single green boy all the way up to where we are now. The, the pinnacle, the highest end of any research I have ever seen in... RimWorld, that being the highest point of science, never stops. 16 in-game years, which for any RimWorld campaign is a very, very, very long time. Longer than we normally would have. But of course, we have the 18 times faster timescale for humans. Meaning that in total, we've played for nearly 300 years now. 288 years, roughly. We, we didn't kick it until the second episode, but it is roughly around that. Nine generations of descendants in what I can only think is the best way to, to send off from World 1.2, covering all of the mods across all the eras from many different talented mod authors. And in fact, with Major Bomber just being revealed to be pregnant as well, that is our 10th generation. It, it's all kind of perfectly lined up in a way. So the difficult decision for me is how do we end such a monumental campaign with so many characters and dynasties and important figures and, and everything? And then I thought, why don't we do something we haven't ever really done before? Whenever you end a reward campaign by building the standard colony ship, there is always an option to continue after that, you might get a Wanderer turn up or some other event-driven thing that allows you to continue on with the ruins of your base without your original colonists. I was thinking, why don't we send our colonists, not in a single colony ship this time, as we have done that before, but send them off as groups of colonists to all the different areas of, of, of the galaxy, of course, as owns a legacy. Now, because this is the kind of apex of the technology that we are probably ever going to get in remote to be completely honest with you i did ask for some suggestions and i and i looked through the comments as well for cool ideas for the final episode and there were some pretty creative suggestions one of which though was embrace our pretty insane technology abilities at this point and given that resurrect mech serums are base game remote it doesn't seem too far-fetched to suggest that when you are a couple of tech levels above that that you would be able to craft it and of course we were before but now we can pattern it with our pretty insane rift fabricator somebody suggested in the comments yesterday why not resurrect absolutely everybody and i thought as a kind of retrospect to look at the colony that's an incredible idea. In terms of game balance, it's completely fucked. Uh, but if you're concerned about the game balance being completely fucked, let me introduce you, my friends, to the Wealth Graph. <laughs> or, should I say, what's left of the Wealth Graph? Because I'll be completely honest with you, I'm not even sure I can pass what's going on in this anymore. Uh, this is where I was getting, if you remember up here, is where I was getting incredibly worried about our wealth. Uh, that was back on day 919 when we hit, or we were just about to hit 2 million wealth. Uh, to put it into perspective, we are now up to, oh my god, uh, like a lot of wealth. 96 million. We're up to 96 million. So the plan is very simple. Let's use the power of Ohm, all this technology, all this wealth that we have accrued, resurrect those who gave their lives across the almost 300 years campaign that we've had right now, Bring them back to life and give them a second chance as colonists to go out there into a galaxy and who knows, maybe into other future 1.3 series. And because we roughly, it's, it's not going to be perfect, but because we roughly filled up the grave from top to bottom, if we unbury them in, in kind of this order heading upwards, we'll eventually get to our oldest colonists. I don't even know who the hell Glasses was, to be honest with you. We've got the Hobo, we've got Kirkland, we've got all these old characters that... Alias, I do remember her. She was one of our oldest characters. That was the first wife of Arcadius, in fact. So if we unbury the colonists from bottom to top, not only will we be able to send them out in groups that are kind of appropriate, but we'll also see a kind of refle reflection of the colony as we go back. Of course, as we dig them up, we'll see power armor, and then eventually that will go into flak armor, and then eventually plate armor, and of course, regular tribal gear. I thought this would be a really cool way just to just to kind of sum things up, even if it is absolutely nuts. The first thing we need to do is clear a site for building colony ships. And actually, there's a pretty big coincidence with that. I did clear an area over here, uh, not specifically for this idea, but because the Project Room Factor Insanity machines bugged out. 
I don't know what exactly caused it, and I don't know, I, I can't pinpoint the exact moment. It was, in fact, at some point during yesterday's episode, because when I loaded back into the game to try and make the thumbnail, everything had already broken. And, and it's fairly obvious when you look at the EMC stack here, 1,000 out of 768 stacks. Something's gone wrong. And one thing I also noted here, might be kind of a bug report too, uh, when I go to the duplicator and hit the, uh, the deposit button, uh, if you keep an eye on the EMC in the storage unit, I can just press this and generate infinite EMC. Um, which is, which is pretty high tier, to be honest with you. So because that's gone a little weird, I've ended up removing that. But in the meantime, we've generated enough Eternium where I don't think we have to worry about it. We have over 10,000 Eternium, not to mention so much in the, uh, so much in the actual EMC storage unit. You see, we've got an insane amount and we've got an insane amount of duplicates or enough that we would never need to produce any more Eternium uh, or sorry, I should say EMC again from those granite chunks. So we're free to do whatever we like, assuming we can survive. Because bear in mind, at the end of yesterday, as well, I did crank Void up to 500%. Because I'll be completely honest with you, I feel like even at 500% at this point, Void is not going to stop us. They are not going to lay a finger on us. Well, unless you're 11 years old and I make you drink a cocktail that instantly knocks you out. Uh, which was what happened, by the way. The Empire didn't capture them or bring them down. Turns out the... <laughs> <laughs> I was told that the gourmet cocktails are bugged and they do instantly make your colonists blackout drunk, which is why that caravan was lost. So I think it's a, it's also kind of a fitting appropriate end here that will turn Ohm's Castle into some sort of colony ship construction bay. You can use Eternium as stuffable floors? What on earth? Beauty is 81. There is actually Eternium tiles, right, too. Yeah, so 50 Eternium, 150 cosmic matter and 10 cosmic alloy for 150 beauty wowee i think that given we're just going to use this to launch a spaceship why don't we just build it out of something a bit more simple magic baby told smelly that he wants to spend his life with that oh that's quite nice well you two get a colony shuttle to yourselves then oh and before we get too carried away otherwise our people are going to get somewhat uncomfortable now because of course i always like to read the comments on every episode and i like to make sure that all your requests are met somebody asked very simply can we please have an eternium toilet which means i had to set up and install and fix dub's hygiene mod at the end of a campaign so that we could build an eternium toilet i cannot believe it even with everything we've got we don't have enough power for these rip fabricators it's actually insane so i've uh, actually i think our battery's just run dry right yeah grid x has stored zero uh so even with the three cosmic reactor generation omega and the cosmic reactor generation two times eight there's not enough. So I've queued up another three of the Cosmic Reactor Generation Omegas. Hopefully that'll be enough to last us the rest of the rest of, of this entire settlement. Wowee, I thought that was going to kill the game then. Okay, we've got two reactors online, but now we've got a siege from the Kingdom of Armanla. 500% threat void nightmare. And we've got millions of wealth. It's only 88. It's only 88 people. The fuck? That's... <laughs> That's light luster, I suppose. I mean, look, this was a medieval kingdom. I wasn't expecting much from them anyway. I think even if they'd spawned in with 500 people, it would have just been inconvenient, not actually a challenge. This is horrible. <laughs> I feel like after every raid, we should just go and wipe them out if they don't wipe us out. As a little bit of, uh, a little bit of revenge. Okay, remember, no cocktails this time. Turns out those are, uh... Far more deadly than anything else. Oh! Oh, I thought those were trees. Those are absolutely not trees. My god, have you guys got enough traps here? What the hell? <laughs> You've genuinely got like a thousand traps outside. Well, I mean, this should be a fairly easy one. They're only a medieval kingdom, right? Oh, oh god. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> what the fuck, Arcadius? Hey, there we go. These raids certainly are a lot easier when you don't start things off by drinking a lethal cocktail. Boom, there we go. Since this was their last settlement, the Kingdom of Amonla have been defeated. Relations with the Empire of Hatbur have become very close. They consider you an ally. Well, they weren't for long. Relations with the Avian Dominion have become very close. They consider you an ally as well. Wow, we really could just send them gifts rather than killing them, couldn't we? Huh. Oh, interesting. When you wipe them out, they're removed entirely from the faction graph. Wow, we've actually got four allies now. That feels very out of character. So, back to the colony project. I guess what we'll do is build... 
a generic style spaceship to outfit with I mean, I can't imagine we're going to be sending them in particularly large groups. I, I mean, I was honestly just thinking send any couples that we've got, whether they are married or lovers. Then if they've got any children that are unmarried, so, or, or, or don't have a lover, send them with them as well. We can always just send all of the, all of the randomers who aren't in relationships off in some big colony ship. Oh, we've got everything we need but bloody glass again. Oh, Vikings. Oh my God, the black, I thought we killed the black reindeer clan. Am I wrong? Okay, well, evidently, 187. Well, that seems a little better. But even then, it's it's quite generous for where we are. Look at that tiny child with that giant axe. 11, 8. They've got base poly armor. Finally, we can test the knives. Granted, we've got to test the knives by stabbing a tiny child, but don't tell YouTube and we should be fine. Oh, it's so slow. <laughs> Wait, what? Nord's people are satisfied with the damage done and are leaving. Oh. <laughs> Wait, please. I need to stab you to see if my knives are any good against Beta Polly. Well, I suppose that'll do it. Thank you, Dome. Um, unbelievable. What the hell was that about? <laughs> They legitimately turned up and kicked a hole in the wall and then left. I mean, granted, look, it's like a 300-year-old wall. If somebody turned up and kicked Stonehenge, then that would, would be a lot of damage, sure. Oh, happy birthday, Brig Lebowski. Oh, frail. Now, somebody in the comment section asked, Are you sure that you changed over the drug policy to get them to use Stimex? And the answer is no, I, I didn't. <laughs> 4,000 hours, by the way. And... Honestly, I'm kind of happy to go all in at this stage. Why don't we just make all of the crazy high tier drugs and get them to eat the lot? Accelerant, Boost, Eterno, Aegis, and Lux. I think the other stims are the same as what we're already using. We're using Stimex, and these are just kind of weaker variants of that. Aegis blocks all infections and a variety of diseases. Eterno. Oh, all infections alongside any immune system to a major degree. So is, is, is Eterno a stronger version of Aegis? So we probably don't need that. And there's Boost and Accelerant, which might be the same thing as well. Uh, Yeah, okay. So Accelerant is the... Oh, it's not the better version. They actually have slightly different effects. So those are definitely worth patenting separately. That one gives immunity to everything and immunity against me. So we definitely don't need Aegis. And Lux gives 17% recreation, but it's always safe with no addiction chance. So, Stimex, Accelerant, Boost, Eterno, and Lux. Oh, there's also something here called Hedonia, and there's also Panacea as well. I mean, sure, if we can make it, we, we do need Neutramine and Ambrosia, but I believe we can pattern both of those as well. There's also something called Ascendance, which has it's very similar effects. Oh, look. It also gives the effects of boosts and accelerants, so it's it's above even what we've got. I wonder if that comes from the research, which actually we're just about to finish too. Look at this. Oh, they are definitely taking it. Look. Oh, little smarty. How old are you? Eight. Wowie. <laughs> oh, he's taking two. Or is that two separate ones? Oh, wow. There we go. Oh, my God. Is this, is this okay, though? Are they allowed to take this much? Well, I guess so. Why, why not? Kind of hoping there isn't some hidden interaction between them. I mean, they're all individually safe to take, sure, but I feel like you probably shouldn't cocktail all of this. So for the first colony ship, we do need some glass, and that is that is it at that point, right? We need to put down actually some uh, crypto caskets. Let's put down... Oh, those also need glass. I guess we'll just throw down like three on each ship. I can't imagine we're going to send more people out than that. Glass. Here we are. How long is it going to take to make that? 0 0.4 hours. Uh, you know, I might just leave it on the default setting because otherwise we're going to be overwhelmed with it. Oh, and all the Eternium luxuries are coming along quite nicely. We've got ourselves a very lovely Eternium swimming pool, but I do need to fill up with some water. I wonder if we've got like a, a deep well somewhere around here we can tap into. Oh, yeah, that'll that'll probably do it. Oh, and to celebrate his aging onset frailness, Brig Lebowski is throwing a party. But there is one guest who will not be attending, at least not quite yet, because we have... Right now, at the end of it all, Little Ohm, not attending this party, thank you, send me back. Little Ohm, about to finish the final possible research. There it is. 
We are the pinnacle of creation, the zenith of all, the tower atop the eternal endless sea. Now, many people pointed out and asked about the research beyond it. They said there are, in fact, two more research to go. But the very final research beyond our understanding is literally that. Beyond our understanding. You, you can never actually research that one. The kind of final item there is it says, Disclaimer, you can't complete this technology. And even if you did complete it, which would be pretty damn hard, given that that is uh, 2,147,483,647, if I remember my... <laughs> signed 32-bit integers properly. That is, uh, it, it does say that it will just completely reset again. So there's no point even attempting that one. But I think it's fairly safe to say we've uh, we've got enough now, right? I am, however, quite curious what that final research even unlocks. So we get the Utopia device, Eternity Cell, Bastion of Stability, Enigmatic Blueprint, and then we can also pattern some other things as well. Decadent meals. Oh, so just adds a new patterns for a start, which is quite nice. Uh, what is different? Oh, maybe it's with that other... Yeah, I imagine it's probably with this other thing that we have unlocked then. Oh, yeah, there it is. The Utopia device. 525 Eternium, 150 Cosmic Components, and 45 Enigmatic Components. Much larger than the other things we've produced here. I guess we'll throw one of those down. It's 150 cosmic and 45 enigmatic. Let me go ahead and queue those up. Enigmatic we craft here, right? Oh, look at that. Enigmatic blueprint. What is that? The Holland Tour, the Eternity Cell is unblinking, undying gaze, basked in the wonders of all eternity. It's inner workings and utter mystery to the universe outside. It's the YouTube algorithm. You will never have to worry about power ever again. Done. The birthday party's been called off. What happened? Is it because Ohm couldn't turn up in time? Oh, and in absolutely perfect timing, Ohm has almost finished all of the Enigmatic Bionics, too. This is where it turns out that final tier that we just unlocked introduced even more overpowered Bionics. Susamu casually cracking out a Utopia device in one afternoon. What sort of power draw is that? Oh, actually, not too bad at all. So we pattern from this that we couldn't pattern before. Hedonistic meals. That seems like a delicious treat. Ah, oh, there you go. So there's all of the all of the drugs here. So I guess we only really need is is he Donny the better version of Lux? Uh, they seem to have roughly similar effects. Just takes a bit more work for he Donia. Oh no, I said it as a joke. Wait, what the hell is stable matter? Holy shit! <laughs> there's something beyond Eternium. Okay, fantastic. And then we've also got I can't believe I'm saying it. 700% The Beholder Terminus <gasps> What a fucking melee weapon Melee damage per second 85,000 <laughs> I love it I love it It's it's just It's just insanity at this point Fuck it Give me give me a second one Give me a second one Let's, let's get on this Alright Dr. Turbo Roy I need you to do me a favour uh, Cancel that Cancel these Destroy the lot. At this stage, to be completely blunt, every single bionic, get rid of it. I have to upgrade Arcades with with these instead, huh? Give him all of these Zenith things. Give him the recursion. The What the hell is he? Oh, my God. <laughs> or the, the Cycle Alpha helmet, the Cycle Alpha. This is just, like, actually insanity. Is it probably safe to assume that these are just objectively better than the... Uh, Rift Fabricators. Let's take, for example, the Eternium. Work to make is 1,500. The Eternium in this, work to make is 50. Right, okay. So in that case, why don't we move the robots onto here then? And I guess we'll just get rid of... Just get rid of these. Oh, look at this. Panacea prevents heart attacks, which is honestly a big fucking deal. Bring on the salt. We can have salty meals again. It prevents bad backs, frailty from age, cataphracts, blindness. Cataphracts, not cataphracts. I, I tried to send a drunk baby to deal with cataphracts, and it really didn't work. It, it, it will essentially stop the effects of all aging. Wow. Two Hedonia, two Stimex, two Ascendants, and what was the other one again? Uh, Panacea, right? There we are. So we've got them set that every single day. The drug policy is Stimex that we've got there. That way, we should never have to worry about them becoming old ever again. Wait, is that different to the Hedonist meal? Hedonist dreams? Possibly the food gods think of when we mortals think about ambrosia. Oh, nice. Okay, sure, we'll take some of that. Then Gift of Eternity is the insanely good medicine, so we'll take another hundred of those. And now we'll queue up the... Uh, 
Items we need for Super Arcade. So we need two eyes, two ears. Zenith digestive system? Wow. A zero percent food poisoning chance. Okay, that's pretty that's a pretty good use of the uh the most insane technology. Let's take one recursion, one alpha cycle, or sorry, cycle alpha helmet, and then one pattern cycle alpha armor. I do love that incidentally the uh, cycle alpha helmets have a kind of halo around it which seems very appropriate for saint arcadius and i believe with that that is all of our bionics and all of our insane armor done already it's actually insanely fast yeah work to make 10 and when you have a robot that does things disturbingly fast it is very easy to churn out a whole bunch of crazy shit okay arcadius let's see what we can do with you then well suffice to say that took a bloody long time but arcadius now gets to take the title of being most overpowered remote character we have ever had or will possibly ever have that's also partly thanks to the evolved organs mod dev who told me that there's a compatibility setting in the mod options to allow you to install any limbs not just the evolved organs in the additional body parts so you can make the uh extra dexterous arms which can be installed in the uh, lower right and lower left of the back but if you enable this option you can install anything so i've also given him oh my god look at these body parts I've also given Arcadius two more arms on top of the already overpowered arms. Okay, well, let's try and figure out what's going on here, at least. So, he's got all of the drugs, obviously, kicking on here. Uh, the gourmet food, the luciferin powder, that makes sense. Uh, Zenith Neck Shroud and Head Shroud is... 25 base HP times 10,000 per limb, which is uh, roughly 25,000. Uh... <laughs> which is already insane and then you see things like these what does this do efficiency so so all of them has 700 percent efficiency and some side effects out like the brain for example prevents dementia and alzheimer's if we've got four arms each giving 700 percent efficiency good lord oh but it's nice to see he kept the super seducer implant i will admit i was sort of a little worried about that I'm glad that we've kept a lot of this stuff as well. Bras Vacuol, the Comrade Serum Glands. Does he still have the... Ah, oh, he still has the wings. That's the important part. I'm not going to look at the overview tab until he's back up and the anesthetic is worn off. In the meantime, we'll give him that really, really powerful armor as well. Now, while all that's been going on in the background, I've set the Utopia devices to draw the Stable Matter. Now, the Stable Matter compared to Eternium is... um. Again, suitably continuing with the absolute insanity here. So, Eternium is uh, 1,000 to all of the multipliers. The Stable Matter is 10,000 to all of the multipliers. And the best part is it's only 150 work to make. So, it's um exceptionally fast to produce. Oh my god, I actually dread to look at the wealth graph again. Holy shit, it's gone even worse. Last 30 days, what are we up to now? Uh, is that 1,899,000,000? Uh, oh, no, not quite. 189 million, that's it. Sorry, it's very, it, it's a little difficult to pass when it is, um, <laughs> just this insane. I can't believe I'm saying this. Why don't we do until X? Oh, right. Well, we've drawn 22,000. That would explain why things have gone off the rails a little bit. Uh, you know what? Instead of doing till X, I think I'll just go ahead and say, you know what? I won't even suspend it. Let's just try to remove that from the list. Well, I suppose friendship ended with attorney and bathroom. This one's for you. Random commenter. One stable matter smart toilet it's a toilet with more hit points than 99 percent of the things we've ever made in rimworld <laughs> although i do have some fairly tragic news now you remember a little while ago when we had that infestation and the insects were spawning in for about 10 seconds solidly well that was before we got hundreds of millions of wealth we have another we have another infestation uh oh my god well, this is going to be a laugh. <laughs> to be honest, it wasn't nearly as bad as I was expecting. I mean, it's pretty awful, but it's not its not that bad when you consider Arcadius. Boy, that is a lot of insects, though, huh? Holy crap. You know it's bad when the minimap takes a few seconds to load in. Only 47 mega scarabs. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought it was going to be a lot larger than that. To be honest, beyond a certain point, the game doesn't actually send any more things towards you simply because it would... Uh, I mean, obviously, if it's scaled to the wealth and the threat, it would spawn an array big enough to crash the game immediately. 
So unfortunately, it isn't a true scale to wealth, but you got you got to you got to kind of let it off, I think, in this situation, in this very obscene situation where, to be honest, the wealth graph barely even works. Well, the good news is Arcadius is back up. Let's get him equipped with that absolutely insane gear. The cycle alpha armor and cycle alpha helmet. Both excellent quality might imply that we might be able to repattern them at a higher level as well. Oh, to be honest, it's probably down to the uh, to the machine itself, right? The godly cell crafter. That was a sword called. It was like, ah, oh, something. That was it, recursion. Here you go. I mean, it, it is almost certainly a step up from uh, Z composite ship. So that's, that's quite nice. Oh, wow. I love the little halo on it too. That, that couldn't be any more perfect for St. Arcadius. And there he is. The highest point, the pinnacle, the peak of this entire playthrough. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Look at the fucking shield on it. And now the real question, I suppose. What the hell are his stats like at this stage of things? Let's take a little peek. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, that's 12,000 moving. Or if that initially is 1,200, which would already be insane. Wow, that's... um. That is very obscene. Talking 5,264. It's like my old videos. Ah, uh, here's the plan. I was going to say search and destroy. Thank God we've got stat limiter. I genuinely feel sorry for the insects. This is... This is not okay. Get him, Arcadius. Get him. Oh my God. <laughs> Absolutely shredded. That is insane. The mad part is, it looks as if he's actually taken damage there. I think they did legitimately get a shot through all of this still. Wow, look at that. They actually managed to get two shots in there. What the hell? Cracked leg from the Royal Mega Spider and a bruise on the torso from the Royal Mega Spider. Wow. How will he ever survive? Oh, he's going to top it off by having some nice drugs. Enjoy this moment, Ohm. The fruits of your hundreds of years of hard thinking. So the very final thing to see from Science Never Stops is the enigmatic blueprint, whatever that is. That is the thing that takes 2,500 and promises limitless power. And then once that is crafted, that's it. We've, we've, we've officially seen everything there is to see. I mean, except for the bees from Vanilla Expanded Vikings. But that's a... Well, I think we're a little bit past that now. Oh, there we are. Major Bomber has given birth and i think it's probably fair to assume that this will be our final ever child in the colony miriam dimos i actually have a name already in mind for you so you are the child of arcadius original arcadius or arcadius remastered of course and major bomber pepper stasius major bomber pepper stasius in turn very poetically is related to every single one of the major factions sabat Viva Grave, uh, Vivin, Vivin Gravy Plasma. Good God, if I could say the bloody names. Grandfather and cousin is Arcadius II, Chickeny Pank, Dimos. You've got Sabat. You've got Stasis. Everybody, all the dynasties converged into Major Bomber Pepper Stasius. And then in turn, she married the original colonist, Arcadius. We've already got Ohm, of course. Omega would have been the ultimate symbol for that because it's kind of the finale. So why not go from the opposite perspective and have you renamed... Alf. From Ohm to Alf. I like that. Alf, not like the creepy fucking Muppet thing. Oh, I like the fact that it automatically puts it in a capital letter. I was trying to go for the lowercase Alpha because I thought it would look a little bit better, but it's just gone for a regular uppercase. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's appropriate. And I mean, Ohm was supposed to be an architect being, right? The most advanced form of being, which is the, the finale. So going back full circle there, I, 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 I just thought it just makes sense. Except, except not at all. I just... I just don't have a better name, okay? So then, let's go back to the task at hand now. All of those um, rather insane distractions are out the way. So we are supposed to have 32, but we've got 31 Resa Rector Mech Serums prepared. There are a total of 64 graves, uh, 55 regular graves, and then 9 of the sarcophagus. I didn't include original Arcadius. What happens if we resurrect him? Has science gone too far? I don't think anything would happen because that was just a sleeve for the consciousness, which we've installed, obviously, into uh, Arcadius Remastered. I think that would just be an empty shell at this point. So I'm going to expand the hospital stockpile zone, and then I'm also going to allow colonist corpses. 
That way, when we crack open the graves, they'll be brought down to here where they can be resurrected and then immediately put into a hospital bed. And then maybe we should prepare some sort of video to explain what the hell's going on. Hello there, medieval peasant. You might recognize Ohm and maybe even Arcadius and Ciala and Strupras. Put on this spacesuit because you, my friend, are going to space. I actually didn't see who we dug up first. Who is that? Oh, no. <laughs> we can't resurrect him again. Has he not been through enough? Well, welcome back, Captain Cuba Vive in Gravy Plasma. You're, you're probably going to immediately want to want to die again because this colony is a horrific place. Are you all right, Ohm? What the hell's wrong with you? Food poisoning? God, I'm so sorry. Wait, he's immediately back up. Wait, what are you talking about? Resurrection sickness. Oh, but he's got all of the... Right, he's got of the evolved organs, so he's fine. And I suppose it probably wasn't that long ago since he actually was dead, given that he does have the star steel. These other colonists are going to be so confused. Captain Cuba's up and walking around again. This is so good. And his wife is Penny Vivin Gravy Plasma. She never remarried. Maybe, maybe this could be their happy ever after. Maybe we send Penny and Captain Cuba up in the first... Spaceship. Well, let's go ahead and make this blueprint the colony ship. Or not. Let's go ahead and make this blueprint the colony underscore ship. And then we're going to send Penny Vivin Gravy Plasma and Captain Cuba Vivin Gravy Plasma off to some retirement planet somewhere. And honestly, I think these two really do deserve it at this point. Oh, yeah. It does take 15 days, doesn't it? Um... Well, they can stay in there for a little while. Well, in that case, why don't we just open up a massive amount of the mountain... And build a bunch of colony ships ready. Arcadius? What is wrong with you? Well, I can't send Arcadius up by himself. Even after all these years, he still can't find someone he's happy with. I will admit, I have very much overestimated how long this will actually take. But I think a two-part finale for a essentially 300-year playthrough is more than... I, I, I think that's more than allowed. So between this and tomorrow's episode the actual final finale part two of two i will give them chance to hopefully build as much as we can we have had a mech cluster drop down as long as there isn't a full-on proper raid i'll give them as much time as possible to build as many of these colony ships as possible and then we'll go through the kind of final final launch process that does mean we get one more day of ohm tomorrow i suppose we could go all out and give them all I don't want to give them all the same armor as Arcade. It's quite like the idea of Arcade is having the armor that he's got. And to be honest, we've already hit the armor limit long, long, long ago. So that's more or less irrelevant. But we could give them all the fancy weapons because as we send more and more people up into space, obviously the raids are still going to continue on. Once it's going to be harder and harder to actually defend what we have. I don't even think it'd be a problem of being able to survive the waves. I don't think anything could really kill us at this point. It, the question is whether or not we can actually defend the base from, say, Viking raiders turning up and stealing things or factions just turning up to uh, smash our things. Mechanoids do that all the time. So tomorrow, then, we move on to the Great Exodus, the launching of the 12 colony ships, Ohm's Legacy, all of the people resurrected. It's probably going to be one of the most ridiculous things we've ever done in Rimworld, huh? And I couldn't think of a more fitting ending for... Again, the Ohm series and Rimworld 1.2. Thank you all for watching. And I'm not really the ending I expected for today's episode, I'll be honest, but I really was not expecting it to take quite this long. But hey, that's a side effect, I guess, of uh, the really long Rimworld campaigns. Thank you in the meantime to Inked Sphinx, Asana Kurato, Hottie Sphinx, Revan, El Ziltro, The Incredible Gurren, Dietz, Nanon 10, Rathew, Evan Crocker, Hobo Billy, Joel, Snowdog TW, Taco Cat, Maximus Basilius, Evelyn X, Daily Barbarian, Mellow, Narmo, Angry Welder, Chris, and Aramis for their support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Big thank you to you guys for keeping the channel possible in the first place. Thank you as well to McFluffy, the fluffiest of fluffies. Alexander H, Rommel DK, Spongy Bomb Monster, Tofu 10, Salakin J, Aono, Jackson P, Pumbly, Luden, Scott, Astros the Great, Cyprian, Papa Snow, Monk, and Lucius Martius. 